been dating someone pretty intensely for the last six weeks and it was wonderful it was wonderful it was full we were full of conversation and laughter and friendship and all these wonderful things but for various reasons we're just at different life stages and doesn't necessarily have a long-term compatibility You know, you don't need to be an intergalactic space dock worker to translate this gibberish. It's pretty simple. When she says they were intensely dating, what she really meant was hardcore joy joy time with her barren squish box of eternal sorrow. Full of conversation is merely her rambling with him idly replying while waiting for her to leave his apartment. She may have been laughing, but the irony is that she's also the joke because they weren't at different life stages. He clearly wasn't interested in something long term because she didn't meet his bare minimum requirements. She wanted a relationship and he only wanted her naked in the dark with the windows closed. That's funny because it's so true. <laughs> so I know it was the right decision for us to end it, but I'm also sad because it was really fun and I don't want that to stop. Um, but it's also annoying <laughs> that didn't work out and I have to go back to dating. <laughs> Because it's really hard. That's not my problem. It's yours. And you want to know why it's really hard for women like you to date? It's because you're not supposed to be dating at this stage in your life. You're supposed to be out of the dating game with a husband and a family. Men don't desire women past their prime unless they're looking for a little bit of the bedroom bounce or they have unresolved issues from childhood. Either way, it's not going to end well for you. And you know what makes it even harder for women like you to date? Posting cringe on TikTok about how hard it is for you to find a man. Let's just say for the sake of argument in a magical fantasy land, and billions of light years away that a man does find you attractive and does want to date you. How in the hell do you think he's going to react once he sees this cringe you've posted on TikTok? Because airing out your psychological baggage for the entire planet to see probably isn't going to work out as well as you think. You know that. Of course I do, sir. Everybody knows that. Of course we do, sir. But what I take away from this experience is that what I've been holding out for and what I keep holding out for is possible. I just need to find someone where pretty much everything is aligned. And then, you know, live happily ever after, right? But that, that was, he was an awesome guy to date. Mm, this is scary. Mm. Happily Ever After was an ending written by Hollywood screenwriters in the 1930s after the American Congress told them that going out in a hail of gunfire was punishable by law with 30 years in prison and being blacklisted by Hollywood. It's a fantasy that women who hit the wall sell themselves despite the fact that they are completely broke. And you can just tell by the look on her face that she's done run out of time and has a snowball's chance in hell in trying to find a man who will take her seriously. But it's not like all hope is lost. There are plenty of men out there who will have no problem taking her to bed for a little bit of action. But they're probably gonna have to be drunk and unwilling to exchange phone numbers afterwards. But let's be real here. That's just common sense. Quick question. Where are we meeting the men that actually want to date and be in a relationship? Because it's not the dating apps. It's not. It's not the coffee shops. I've been trying that. I've been trying that for a while now. Definitely not the bars. Not at my age, because they're all like 21, 22, so they definitely don't want to be in a relationship, and I definitely do not want to be a cougar. Nothing wrong with that, just not my type. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> It's funny you should mention that because we were all at Skeeter's house last weekend. So get this, Skeeter got into legal possession of about a baker's dozens worth of go-karts. So we all pitched in and helped him convert his garage into an exact replica of the Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. Now we didn't have any tortoise shells or banana peels to throw at each other, but that's all right. He gave us some professional grade dodgeballs and that worked even better in my opinion. And the best part is Skeeter figured out a way to make this completely tax deductible. So not only were all of the good men growing out in go-karts, we did it in a way that was financially responsible, and that's pretty awesome. It sucks you weren't able to make it because it was pretty cool. I, again, tend to go about eight to 10 years older than me. I found out even those don't want to date for a relationship. Even they are still figuring things out. Yeah, they are. 
So where are we meeting the ones that want to date and be in a relationship? That want to date to eventually get into a relationship? That are dating to see if we're compatible for a relationship, not other things. No, no, no. I need to know because I have yet to find them. <laughs> <laughs> Face the facts, woman. If you are still looking for a man to financially support you at your age, you're already doomed. The young studs out there aren't willing to give you a chance for anything outside of bedroom practice because they have good relationships with their mothers and they eventually want to have children one day, which is a service you cannot possibly provide. And the older, more discerning gentleman wants nothing to do with you for the same reasons. Frankly, you're too old and they don't want to waste their precious time with a woman who has daddy problems. They can smell you coming from a mile away because you reek of unresolved trust issues and psychological baggage. It's a subtle fragrance with hints of old tuna, wine-soaked cardboard, and pure unadulterated ammonia. It's quite pungent. Oh yeah. Ooh, it's a formidable scent. <laughs> it stings the nostrils. And I've been looking, so maybe I should stop looking. I don't know. But if you know, please let me know. Help your girl out. Where are we meeting the good men? Where are we meeting the men that actually want to be in a real relationship? Let me know. Maybe uh -oh. help me. No way! This is your dishwashing liquid! You soak in it! Lady, you want to know where all of the good men went? You friend zoned them because those guys would have been more than happy to wife you up back when you were worth something. But you sat there with a hyperinflated ego because Chad was filling your inbox with words that peeled off your panties faster than a lonely sailor on shore leave. So instead, you convinced yourself that those men needed to up their game to meet your insanely unreasonable standards. So they ultimately checked out and left you to your devices. And now they want nothing to do with you. And there is nothing you can do to change that but don't worry madam i hear the shanties at the wall are cold and miserable but you get all of the boxed wine you could possibly drink it's pretty terrible but at the end of the day you brought it on yourself it's noon on sunday memorial day weekend and i have nothing to do i have nowhere to go and this isn't I'm not looking for pity. Liar! 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 This is the reality for some people sometimes. I know some of you will come into the comments and be like, why don't you go do this? Why don't you go do that? Why don't you call this person? Why do you call that person? I, I know how to do all those things, but sometimes you do all those things and this is what's left. Nice try. No, that's the reality for old, crusty divorcees. It's the reality of a woman who thought that she would find greener pastures if she just divorced her man to go find her true and authentic self on a healing journey, only to find that the pastures were actually a shade of puke brown. Now, all of her married friends are busy doing things with their families, and she's left in the dust to try to figure out what to do with her time now that she's maintained permanent residence at the wall. And be honest, woman, you are totally looking for pity. You want your comments section filled with old and crusty divorcees who will tell you that it gets better and that your prince charming is right around the corner to swoop you up and save your life because at the end of the day those comments are the only real solace you have in this new life that you created for yourself i spend a lot of holidays alone not on purpose i do the phone calls i do the things i try to put it out there but this is the reality of it and now that i know it because i'm living it i'm much gentler with other people I'm much more careful when I ask them, what are you doing this holiday weekend? Because some people don't have things to do. And again, I want to be clear, it's not a pity party. Liar! 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 It's the reality for so many people. I spent this morning, I spent about an hour with a friend. Now, I'm about to go into stores to look for something to fulfill me. Wow! That's amazing! Oh please, you're not gentle. If you truly knew people who had nothing to do on the holidays, you would be hanging out with them and not complaining on your TikTok cringe post. In reality, you're saying this because you want people to be more gentle with you because you have nothing to do on the holidays. In other words, you want people to feel sorry for you. You want their sympathy, i.e. you want them to pity you. And from the looks of it, you had friends, but you probably alienated what 
what few you had left by incessantly whining to them about how lonely you are after getting divorced. So naturally, they cut you out of their lives so they could have some peace with the people they care about. There is no pity to be had here, lady. You brought it on yourself. It's so beautiful outside. I'll get on my bike later, probably. I'll walk my dog later, I know that for sure. Actually, no, I won't, because I'm too anxious and I'm too sad and I'll still be alone. And even if you were to present an opportunity to me right now to do something or be with someone, I'm literally in that state where I can't. It's just this crazy, I don't know what the purpose or point is of what I'm saying, other than sometimes when you see somebody, don't assume they have their shit together. Don't assume it's picture perfect. Nobody cares, Sean. Nobody cares. Then what is the point, woman? Here you are complaining that you have nothing to do, and then you decide even if you had something to do, you wouldn't do it, so it's ultimately pointless to do anything, so you're just gonna throw yourself a pity party, buy some trinkets, and then go home and cry yourself into oblivion. But please continue to tell us how you don't want our sympathies, which is fine because none of us have any to spare. You were the one who thought that smart people get divorced at the ripe old age of 60, and believe it or not, actions have consequences, and the fact that it took you over 60 years to figure that out is kind of hilarious, to be honest. But don't worry, nobody assumes that you have your shit together because frankly, my dear, none of us give a damn. And that's gonna do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. As always, if you find that my particular brand of humor is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell so we can give the good old fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for checking out the new video, and until next time, peace out, homies.